So for this demonstration, what we're looking at is a balance arm. What I have is an aluminum arm with two hooks at the end so I can attach weights to them and it can pivot back and forth. So right now, obviously I don't have any weights in it and it is in fact already balanced, right? Which hopefully makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up in the most simple configuration, which is I'm going to attach two masses of equal size to both hooks. These are both 500 gram masses in case you are wondering at home. So if I attach 500 grams to both sides, and right now I'm holding the weight off, think about what you would expect if I let them go. If that's not what you were expecting, then this is gonna be a really long demonstration for you. But equal sizes on both sides cause this to balance. It might not be perfectly horizontal because I think I nudged it a little bit right off the bat, but it's pretty close. What we've got going on is on both sides, we've got gravity pulling down on our 500 gram masses, which is creating a force. For this, the entire arm itself wants to pivot around this pivot point, uh, which a lot of times you might hear called a fulcrum in levers. But for today, I'll just refer to it as the pivot. So we've got two weights and two forces pulling downwards on both sides. But with this wanting to rotate, instead of thinking about the forces that are acting on our bar, we're gonna be thinking about the torques that are acting on the bar. The torques are essentially rotational forces. But the big difference is that with torques, it's not just the force that matters. We know that these are 500 grams on both sides, which means that on both sides, we have approximately five newtons of force pulling down. The force matters, but it's also the distance to the pivot. So over here, we've got this force of five newtons pulling down, which is going to make the entire bar want to rotate in this direction, which is counterclockwise. On the right side, we've got five newtons pulling down, making the bar want to rotate this direction, which is clockwise. With that, since it's the same size forces, then we're doing good on that. The distances are the same size distances, and so when you multiply the two together, or technically cross multiply, where it's technically the radius cross multiplied by the force, so the perpendicular parts of the force multiplied by the distance to the pivot point. With these torques, if you do the math, they end up being the same size torque but making the bar want to rotate in opposite directions. And so the result of that is just like when you add forces going in the opposite directions together, the torques cancel each other out. Now, if I were to take one side of this and replace it with a larger force, this is 1000 grams, so obviously twice as large, I'm holding the bar steady, you should expect what's about to happen. Uh, I apologize for the noise that this might make, but when I let go, it's going to move, accelerate, because these torques are no longer balanced. Here we go. Pretty dramatic. The side with the larger force was able to overpower the side with the smaller force, uh, and remember, it's forces that are important, but with this, it's also torques. So the distance matters as well. So since this torque was larger, it forced the bar to rotate in that direction. Now, with this particular bar, I can unlock it, and I can actually change where the bar is located and move it in and out, left and right, until eventually I find a point where it balances again. And let me lock the bar so that I don't jostle it and surprise myself by having it start rotating. It's balanced again. Obviously the forces are the same size as they were before when it was unbalanced and slammed into the desk, but because the distances are different, then what we see is that the torques are able to balance themselves out. Torque doesn't just depend on the size of the force, it also depends on the distance from the pivot point that the force is acting. So 
for this torque, trying to make things rotate this direction, we've got 10 newtons applied at a distance of approximately 40 centimeters. And so we've got a torque that you could calculate, but it is the same size torque as this one, which is five newtons being applied at a distance of 60 centimeters. Now, you might be at home very mathematically thinking, well, that's weird. That's not what I would expect. Because you might think to yourself, if we have two different size forces, this force is twice as large as this force. To counteract that, wouldn't I need to have twice as much distance on one side as the other? And that would be an extremely good question. That's because on this side, we've got 40 centimeters, this side 60 centimeters, it's not actually double the length, but it should be, except for one small thing. The bar itself actually has weight. The bar itself, every individual piece of this metal bar is being pulled by gravity. A lot of times we will simplify that and we will find the center of mass of that bar. And the center of mass for this bar is right here, about 50 centimeters from either side, right in the middle of the bar. But because that center of mass is here, we can treat it as its own torque. We have gravity pulling down on the center of mass of our bar, and there's a distance right here of about 10 centimeters from the pivot point. And so we know that this, the mass of the bar times that 10 centimeter distance is going to create another torque that's adding to this one. If the bar had no mass, then it wouldn't actually exist in the real world. And a lot of problems you might see this talk about if your bar has no mass or pretend the bar has no mass, that's putting it in an ideal situation that I can't actually replicate for a demonstration for you. But here in the real world, we can go ahead and we can just take into account the mass of the bar, count it as an extra torque. Realistically, gravity isn't just pulling at this distance. We're simplifying it by saying that the force is acting on the center of mass. If you wanted to be really technical, you would have to chop the bar into an infinite number of imaginary little bits. And you would say, okay, this tiny little bit of the bar weighs exactly this much and it's at this distance away. This tiny little bit of the bar weighs this much and it's this distance away. And you would have to do the math in a very complicated manner. Or you could write out a calculus-based equation where you integrate the mass of the bar and you're able to do that. And a lot of the times the way that we just simplify it is we find that center of mass and we treat it as though all of the mass is focused right here because in the end it is a simpler shortcut to getting to a solution that works. Even if it's a little counterintuitive, you might have expected this to be exactly twice the distance, but once you add in that extra little torque from the center of mass, it's accounted for and it works really well. If I were to unbalance this even just a little bit, this is a teensy tiny 20 gram mass. If I hang that on either side, we should get enough torque to start it rotating. Although very, very slowly. Remember, it's not an instantly unbalanced like it was before when I jumped from 500 grams to something twice the size. It's just a little bit of extra torque, which means that it's gonna cause just a little bit of extra angular acceleration. And so it started off and it might not have even looked like it was starting to rotate. But that unbalanced set of torques created that angular acceleration and it started rotating very slowly. But as the acceleration stays constant, what we see is that it starts to pick up more and more and more rotational velocity or angular velocity, which is exactly like you would see in a normal line with a very small net force. Something will start to accelerate. It might not be moving very quickly. Its velocity is not changing at a very high rate, but 
if it keeps accelerating, that velocity will keep getting larger and larger and larger until there's something that stops it, in this case, the desk. 